There's no sodding help. Don't do that! Don't do that! You bastard! Oh, bugger! Can you move? Quick! That's right, I've got crystal white everywhere. It went the wrong way for some reason. How long have we got to go? We've got three minutes. Three mm minutes. -hmm. Okay. What the hell did it do? It was working fine and then suddenly it went the wrong way. I took a photograph of it and it suddenly went wrong. Well, we'll try and get it set up as best we can when we can do it. Okay, right. I'll try not to get stuff all over me.
for a minute. Having set it all up, it all went wrong. So. Right, got sound. Mm -hmm. I was just checking everything that we got. We've got all the cameras. That one didn't look like it was on me. Right, I'm going live. Good morning. We're going to have a look today at transport systems in plants. We're uh, experiencing the usual sort of technical problems not of course just with the cameras and the broadcast system but of course we're trying to do some experiments live as well and of course we're working occasionally especially with biology with living organisms and it's playing hard to get at the moment so we're going to have a look at transport in plants we're going to look at something about moving water transpiration and I've got a little setup that I'm going to show you first and we're going to try and get it set up and then over the course of the next 30 minutes or so we'll have a look and see how it's going to go. So let's go over and have a look at an experiment that I've got set up using something called a potometer. Right. There, there we go. Right, right, here I've got a potometer set up and I've been outside, I have already got a plant and I've got it all set up and then it's all gone wrong. So the plant did something rather unusual which I didn't expect. So what I've got to do is now get this set up. But we'll have a look and see what I've got here. I've got a plant and the plant's ready to sort of work, it's going to photosynthesize and it should have a tube of water all the way and that seems to have disappeared so I'm going to take out this plant and we're going to see if we can get it all set up properly so what I've got, I've got some water in here and I'm just going to push the water from the syringe this way up so the water is completely coming out right I already brought myself some water here right I put a little bit of blue dye here purple dye and what we're going to do is we're going to try and stick this plant in there now I already did this once underwater to try and make sure it all worked nicely the plant has perhaps other ideas how it's going to work but I've now got a good I hope water seal with the plant I'm trying to find a plant with the right diameter is also difficult right the three-way valve here which Paul's just going to bring down and what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the three-way valve now so it's now this way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, pull in a little bit of water and as I do so what I'm trying to do is capture an air bubble and my head's in the way but I've got one here about one centimeter if I now turn this on water can now move down here up through the tube and it can evaporate through the plant and I'll put a light on above the plant so that it's getting plenty of light 
and what we're going to do is going to have a look and see what happens to this as we go through our little short little lesson. So photometer has a plant and this plant in theory is photosynthesizing it's got sunshine it's got then the ability to lose water and as it brings water up through the plant and it evaporates then water is being more sucked up through this tube and it's connected to this capillary tube which we've got now set up here and I've put a little bit of dye in and the idea of a little bit of dye you can see where the line is so it's set at the moment at I think about 0.6 could you zoom in for me see what you can get You've got a bit of parallax on there, so what, what do you read? One centimetre? Yeah. About one centimetre. Alright, so we'll, we'll set that here at about one centimetre. It's because you've got quite a lot of parallax. You're looking a lot higher up if the ball zooms out. You're basically not at eye level here, but you're higher up, and so you're seeing that about one centimetre. So let's leave this and we'll see if it's going to do anything. I'm not terribly hopeful because what I can see up here is a tiny little air bubble, which is coming from the plant. But we'll try, we'll see. I did set it up all underwater so that I got no water in to start with and the plant still had another idea about what it was going to try and do. So we'll, we'll have a look and see what happens. Right. So, let's have a look at transport in plants. One experiment that we're not going to do today but that uh, you can try at home is either with something like some carnations or with celery and what you can do with a piece of that is to put it into some water. So if I just thought I'd set this up but still I was wrong. If I take a beaker and I put in a little flour and we put in here some food colouring, some dye, uh, this works really well with white carnations. and the dye goes up the stem and it colours part of the plant and what we often see for some carnations is this idea they put some blue dye or some red dye. It works of course just as well if you take a piece of celery and we know that celery's got these long sort of things down there and again we put in some dye into the water so we take some leafy and they've got to be leafy uh, celery stalks in water with this coloured dye and we need to leave for a few hours and it is necessary to do that which is why I can't do this experiment in this time because very simply I haven't got a few hours to try and leave these and what happens is 
that the water travels up through the celery and then later you can always chop the celery and you can have a look and see what cells are going to be covered with the sort of dye. So we've got that experiment. I will set that one up for next time so we can see the results and I can always video the the setup of this and if we're really clever we'll play that back during the live performance. I'm looking at my son hoping that we can do this. Um, we'll try that one perhaps next time. Right, so we've got some special cells. These are xylem cells. The xylem cells, if we look at them in different plants, basically consist of some cells in what we call a vascular bundle. This is a bundle of cells and you'd see this as a vein or something in perhaps a leaf or in the stem if we chop our stem then you often see these sort of round the edge of the top of a plant. The xylem cells tend to be fairly large cells then there are some smaller cells that also move liquids and these are the phloem cells the xylem cells are all to do with water And the phloem cells are all to do with the transport of, I suppose, food around the plant. The xylem is what we're going to have a look at at the moment. And we're going to look at how it moves water around the plant. So why is the first question. Why is it so important? for plants to transport stuff around them, especially water. So let's deal with this idea of water transport first. So for this, I think I'm going to start off with drawing a little plant. My plant consists of a stem. Somewhere coming off this plant will have a leaf. I'm going to ignore the rest of the plant and coming off of the plant at the bottom we're going to have a root. So this here is our soil and what we're after is in the soil we have water and we have minerals. And what we're needing to do is get the water and the minerals into the plant. We then need to move that up the plant into the leaf where it's going to meet carbon dioxide and water is going to combine with that and that's going to give us our products for our photosynthesis. So the plant needs water for photosynthesis but it also needs the plant water for another reason and that is so it stays stiff. So the word we use here is turgid. The plant wants to stay reasonably turgid so that Basically, it's stiff so it can hold itself upright and water is responsible for that. 
let's look at that in more detail and what we're going to look at is a process of transpiration so we're going to finish up here with a leaf and we know that the leaf has these sort of veins in it these veins are basically delivering water so let's go down here a stem and we're going to have a short plant so here's our soil and coming out let's have a bit of a root and what we're going to do is we're going to put in a tube here now this tube is the xylem and in fact it's not made up from live cells but it's made up from basically just dead cells they're cells literally just joined together and they've got no ends they've got no top no bottom and so this forms a tube all the way from the root up to the leaf and this continues as the xylem in the, the vascular bundle this is also connected to this root hair root hair because it's going to give a much larger surface area down here to bring in the water the water is going to move from here through the cells now why is it going to do that well partly it's going to move by diffusion because if we haven't got much water here and we've got a lot of water there it's going to move in we're also going to have osmosis allowing some of the movement of water because here it's probably going to be a stronger concentration <coughs> and water will move from the weaker solution to the stronger solution basically just trying to make it as even as it can water then enters the xylem where it's a complete column of water, every atom touching every other one. Each molecule of water touching each other, all the way up until it gets to the leaf. And in the leaf, we drew this last time, we've got a waxy cuticle. We've got the upper epidermal cells we've got some upright palisade cells which are going to do the bulk of the photosynthesis and they're this shape so they get the maximum amount of light and under this we've got some spongy mesophyll cells cells with lots of airspace around them and then We've got near that a vascular bundle made up from xylem cells and the much smaller phloem cells. At the bottom here we have the lower epidermis with its guard cells and the stomata so we've got the whole here a stoma and into here we've got coming in the carbon dioxide and coming out we've got the oxygen plus we have water now as water comes up it comes 
out from these xylem cells in all directions and as it comes into the spongy mesophyll there's a large airspace and we can get some evaporation happening we've also got the water being moved around and into all of these other cells the palisade cells so they can receive the water so that we can do water plus carbon dioxide in the presence of light giving us glucose plus oxygen the oxygen escapes out through the stoma and all is well with the plant what pulls up more water is the fact that some of the water evaporates and comes out through this hole in the plant this stoma if you've got lots of them they're called stomata so the water comes out now as this water comes out through the leaf it's going to draw more water up through the stem and dissolved in all this water are minerals all the necessary minerals that plants going to need to aid it with its photosynthesis it might need in there some nitrates it might need some phosphates it might need some other minerals one of which I'll tell you could be magnesium and the reason it needs magnesium is like people need iron to try and help their blood magnesium is used in photosynthesis in the production of the molecule that does all the work which is chlorophyll so we need to bring up some of these minerals and we do that by constantly moving the water up and as we constantly move the water up more water enters the plant taking with it anything that's dissolved in the soil such as nitrates magnesium and various other things so we've got this process in plants which we're going to call transpiration transpiration then is the movement of water from the roots the root hairs absorbing the water the water moving up the xylem and then coming out of the xylem through this vascular bundle and the water evaporating now what happens to the plant under different circumstances so let's have a look at these different circumstances normally we're going to have some sort of evaporation evaporations taking place in the leaves now what causes this to have better evaporation well one of the things here is certainly going to be wind on a windy day this is going to evaporate better than it will on a still day we need to worry about the humidity on a humid day there's lots of water in the atmosphere evaporation will be low but if we've got low humidity then water is going to readily evaporate so we don't really want high wind we just want some wind so we've got wind we've got low humidity we've also got something to do with temperature on a cold day not going to evaporate as well as on a warmer day so all of this evaporation is driven by the leaves and what's controlling 
the amount of water leaving here are the stomata. If I draw a stomata from looking at it at the bottom of a plant, then we've got this little stomata, I suppose, and it's got two cells. I've got this cell here, and I've got this cell here. And if there's a lot of water, these cells are what we call turgid. And if they're turgid, they're open. Now, a way of looking at these cells would be something perhaps like this. Imagine these are two cells. When they're full of water, they become turgid and they bend open and water can go through the hole. When there's less water, the cells collapse and the hole becomes much smaller. So if I were to try and draw this when it's not so much water, flaccid, then these cells then are not open as much and they've collapsed and this hole now opens very much less. So this is our stoma, our hole, and these are our guard cells. Either turgid when they are opened up or flaccid when they're closed. And you can see I've been playing with crystal violet this morning. There's my dye for my plant. So they open or they close. And that depends on the amount of water. So if there's a lot of water, they're turgid, flaccid, when there is little water. So when the plant has little water, it's not going to evaporate very well and the holes are smaller, less water can escape, so the plant is going to conserve water. <coughs> now, let's go and have a look and see how my plant is doing. Let's see if it's actually making any progress so far. And have we got any progress here, Paul? can't really see it. Okay, so let's have a look. And I'll get down here and have a look and see if anything's happening. I've got my little bubble here. I haven't put my head in the way, unfortunately, cause, so I can try and see. And I think I've had a bit of movement. My bubble here. So it might have moved a little bit. I measure it's moved about one centimetre down. So the plant is managing to do a little bit of photosynthesis and probably do a little bit of evaporation of the water some transpiration so looks like it's moved about one centimeter well we'll leave it a little bit longer and see how it gets on Sometimes the plant works really well and other days it doesn't. It's not that happy today, but we'll, uh, we'll see what goes on. So what we need to try and do is to have a look at 
what's actually going on there. We can actually work out the rate of transpiration. I'll show you how we could, could do that. So if I know in my design here of my potometer, and it's looking something like this idea that we've then got a tube going up here and that's connected to my leafy little plant it's not very good what we've got here inside is a much narrower tube So we've got a wide tube here allowing the water to go along and we've set a little bubble here and it was set next to the one centimetre mark and as water evaporates by transpiration pulling water through as the water moves up here so this little bubble moves down and we've seen here not very easily a movement here of about one centimeter now if i know some things about my photometer then we can actually do things if i've got my piece of glass tubing and i'm going to try and draw some here what it's got is a very small bore so although it's a big piece of glass tubing inside it is a very small tube where the water can actually flow and if i know the cross-sectional diameter of this tube So then we can actually work out using pi r squared times h to work out the volume of water that's gone. The maths here, work out the area of the circle times the height, the length that we've actually managed. And we can then try and work out how much water might have been moved up. If we leave this for a long time then this water is just going to get sucked up and you've seen probably with many plants that they can if they're wilted they can suck up a lot of water suck up here the word is transpiration that the water evaporates out of the plant and as it does so it draws in much more water if the cells are flaccid then they can take up on the way lots more water and this makes all the plant stiff and holds it together so what i need to have is a measure for my potometer of the diameter and then we know it's moved one centimeter in let's say 30 minutes and if we know the diameter of this we can work out what's going on let's take some sample numbers because my experiments not that good at the moment so let's suppose that the diameter of the tube is one millimeter so that's going to mean that our radius is going to be 0 0.5 of a millimeter and the movement of the little bubble has been one centimeter i'm going to do everything in millimeters here so that's going to have moved 10 millimeters let's put it into our equation and we can work out the volume so our volume is going to equal pi times 0.5 squared times the height which is 
going to be 10. If we go over to the calculator, we can work this out. So let's put in pi times, we've got 0 0.5 squared times 1 centimetre, 10 millimetres, and that's going to give me a volume of 7.85, which I think is a bit generous for our accuracy here, cubic millimetres of water, which is not really an awful lot. But it gives us an idea about this rate of loss. So we've got some ideas here. Now there is quite a good experiment to try out and I decided not to do this one today but we can have a look at it. One of the experiments we can do is to go out and take a leaf. And with this leaf you want to paint on it with any colour nail varnish you like a band across this plant. You leave it to dry for a little while and then you can peel off the nail varnish. And what we see on the nail varnish are some little dots, little stomata. And what you can try and do is you can try and estimate how many on the bottom of a plant. And we take an area, let's suppose, one centimetre by one centimetre, and we count up the number of stomata in that area. Now, there's actually going to be a much larger number here. I've drawn five in. But in fact, you're going to get a rather a different number here. We look at um, perhaps measuring this per millimetre. And we can see how many you might have per millimetre. Works better sometimes if you can look at this under a low powered microscope. And students often ask me what sort of microscope they ought to have. You know, should they go for a 700 times or should they go for 1500 times magnification? And the answer is normally you want a fairly low powered microscope and these work a lot better. So what we need to do is to look at some leaf, take the nail varnish, and once we've got this nail varnish, we can perhaps look at it under a microscope or even a magnifying glass, and it gives a much better impression of these little dots that you can see on the mic under the microscope on this sort of piece of nail varnish. Very hard to see on the plant itself. It becomes much clearer if we can look at it on lovely pink nail varnish. You should see the problems I have trying to buy nail varnish when I go into the shop and I ask, can I have some nail varnish? And they say, look at me funny. And they say, yes, sir. And what colour would you like? And the answer is, I, I really don't care. But uh, I don't really want anything terribly flashy. So we've got here this idea of nail varnish. You can manage to look at a small area perhaps under the microscope and if you need to look at it under the microscope we need to measure how much is under the microscope and that's a problem 
Now let's have a look and see what we might get per millimeter we might expect with some plants to have in the region of about 250 whoops, stomata per square millimeter So you can see that these are going to be really hard to see under sort of by the naked eye it's going to be quite difficult to try and have a look at it so we can try and measure up a unit measure under the microscope and we can try and count up how many they are and we can try and relate that to what they are in real terms and we can then work out perhaps how much we've got in one area we could then repeat this and we'll get wildly differing numbers perhaps in the region of 200 to 300 or 250 to 300 that's going to give us an average so we can work out an average number per millimeter squared and that gives you an idea per leaf and it's an enormous number of stomata per leaf it's going to be in the region of perhaps between somewhere like five to ten thousand stomata per leaf and their role simply is letting water escape. No varnish is quite good. It's best to peel this off and put it under a microscope slide and have a look with an eyepiece graticule. Now the problem I've got with some of this is actually trying to show you some of this to try and do it. But uh, it is sort of quite an interesting experiment to do. My plant, if I have, have a look, a look at, at it, it. left, left it, now it now as long, long as I dare. Just still not doing, doing much, much. it's still, still looking at this oh, it might have moved more it might be nearer two points back 2.3 so it is moving very slowly down here I'm getting this tiny little bub bubble moving it is moving very very slowly and we wouldn't expect the plant to be transpiring wonderfully I can make it better for the plant if we supply some wind then it will go better it's not that sort of stiff here it's struggling a little bit so uh, it's, it's what plant I could easily manage to be the right diameter to fit in this tube this morning so it, it's working, but I'm not terribly impressed with how well it's actually going. Some of my experiments are better than that. Only problem is with experiments that when you're working with biological material, basically it does as it well pleases, really. So we've looked at several ideas. We've looked at using celery in water and dye and leaving it to see what it can do and for next time I'll have one that I have prepared earlier because it just takes so long to go and maybe we can have a look at some stomata and we'll see what we can actually do with this and if I can do it I'll show you for next time so 
that's it for this lesson. We've had a look at those bits and pieces. And what I hope is if you liked it, you can subscribe. And I will see you same time next week when we'll look at some of the results of these things. And we'll move on and have a look at the next subject, which is hopefully quite near to your hearts at the moment, which is all about communicable diseases. I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.